The Cartesian product of sets A and B is defined as the set of all the ordered pairs where the first element comes from A and the second one from B. In this video we situate the Cartesian product into the formal world. In particular we are going to answer the following questions. What is formally an ordered pair and how to construct a Cartesian product using axioms. Let's go. An ordered pair AB should be a set encoding the elements A, B and also their order. Clearly we cannot use ordering described in the part A of this video, since ordering is based on a Cartesian product and an ordered pair. We need an elementary definition. Naturally the ordered pair cannot be just a two element set containing A and B given by the axiom of pairing. We would get the same set if we tried to encode the reversed pair BA, so it doesn't encode individual elements uniquely. We need to distinguish the elements A and B, for example by packing the element A into a singleton set and leaving the element B as is. Will this work as a definition of an ordered pair? Now the pair BA looks differently, swapping A and B shifts the frame around A. But it is still not sufficient for an ordered pair. Why? I am again providing 5 seconds to think about it, but it is rather a time to pause the video if you would like to figure it out on your own. The issue is that the elements AB can also be singleton sets. So if someone gives us a set with spec CD, it is unclear whether we should decode it as a pair with C on the left and packed D on the right or with D on the left and packed C on the right. These were a few examples of what is not working, but after playing with it for a while you could eventually find something which works. The most common one is Kuratowski's definition. The formal pair AB is defined as follows. We pack A into a singleton set and then we create another set out of A and B. The ordered pair is a set containing these two sets. To ensure that the set constructed this way encodes uniquely A, B and their order, let's discuss two cases. First, consider the case when both elements are the same, so we are encoding the pair A, A. A set cannot contain one element twice, so the two A's in the second set are merged into one. Now also the two singleton sets are merged into one. So the ordered pair is the singleton set containing the singleton set containing A. In the second case, when A and B are different, there is no collapse going on. So our pair contains one singleton set and one set with two distinct elements. To decode the pair, we first treat the element from the singleton set, then we remove this element from the two element set and read the second element. This way we've verified that Kuratowski's definition works in the sense that it uniquely encodes every ordered pair of elements. In the end we are going to do a little exercise with axioms and construct the Cartesian product, the set of all the ordered pairs with elements from some given two sets. We are going to look at two constructions. One construction using brute force to demonstrate that you can construct almost anything with power set and separation. And then another construction with a nice application of the axiom of replacement. Let's go. We have two sets, A and B, we want their Cartesian product, so we start by taking their union. We need the axioms of pairing and union for that. After taking the first power set, we get a set with plenty of elements. There are all the singleton sets containing elements of A, also all the two element sets containing one element from A and the other one from B and there are plenty of other irrelevant elements. Now let's take a power set again. Among other things it contains all the two element subsets of the previous power set. For example this one which is by Kuratowski's definition equal to the ordered pair A0, B0. Similarly, there will be all the other ordered pairs we need for the Cartesian product and among them plenty of junk around. But we can simply get rid of the junk with the axiom of separation. The rule for separation simply states that we want only the elements which belong to the Cartesian product. So after one union, two power sets and one separation we have the Cartesian product. 
There is a minor disadvantage of this construction that we had to go inside the definition of an ordered pair. If we picked another definition of an ordered pair, we would have to construct the product from the scratch again. Yeah, it would probably suffice to add a few power set or some union and it would work out as well, but wouldn't it be much nicer if we didn't have to care at all what an ordered pair stands for? Yes, that's what the second construction of the Cartesian product does. Let's fix a single element of set A and consider the following process. Whenever someone gives us an element of the set B, we pack it together with the fixed A into an ordered pair. The axiom of replacement tells us that if we apply this process to all the elements of set B, the results will form a set as well. This way we can construct a single column in the Cartesian product. And since we could pick the initial element A, we can construct every column of the Cartesian product. The trick is to apply the axiom of replacement one more time. So far we have described a process that takes an element of set A and creates a column. By the axiom of replacement we can take all the columns and pack them into a set. This is not a Cartesian product since every column is packed in an individual set, but we can easily fix this with the axiom of union. As before we have constructed the Cartesian product A times B and we didn't have to look at the inside of the ordered pair. It could be anything we can construct from the axioms. And that is all about the Cartesian product for now. In the next video we are going to examine other formal objects, natural and ordinal numbers. Have you ever heard that 987? And what is this number cannibalism good for? See you then!